Good afternoon and welcome to our virtual recruitment session with ADP and we have joining us today from ADP, Casey Folks. So welcome Casey. Thank you. Hello. Thanks for joining us. So I have several questions I'm going to be asking Casey and then if anybody has questions they certainly can put them in chat or they can wait until I get through these eight questions and ask them if they would like to. So first thing, Casey, that we'd like you to do is to tell us a little bit about yourself and your role with ADP. Yeah, so um, I graduated from WVU. I um, was born and raised in West Virginia. And um, we all have an itch in our beginning of our life of where we want to do. And I just kind of was looking to go towards a bigger city and uh, Pittsburgh seemed like a nice landing spot to migrate to because um, it's too close to my family. So I've been here 15-ish years <laughs> and I love it. I absolutely love Pittsburgh and I started in recruiting, 23, 24, something of that nature. And kind of speaking, when I graduated, I actually graduated in the recession. So nobody was hiring either. And it was very stressful and overwhelming in different ways in the coronavirus. We obviously didn't have any health scares, but, but it was still a stressful time for sure. And so, um, yeah, and then I, I did find kind of my footing eventually, you know, and uh, came into recruiting. And um, I've been with ADP for 10 years now. And I'm a salesy type of person. Everybody said I should be in sales. There just wasn't any sales jobs at the time. But this guy's like, I'm, we'd love to hire you as a recruiter. Recruit for salespeople. So it was, it was a nice match there. And I recruit for inside and outside sales um, at ADP. But right now my focus is inside sales. And we have an, um, an office here in Pittsburgh in the Robinson area. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, lots of opportunities, right? We don't necessarily go down the path that we might think will go down, or even if we do, we might shift in our career throughout our lives. So it's rarely a straight line from yeah. college into <laughs> career, right? That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> what do you find that employees and interns like best about ADP? Number one would be culture. Um, every single person that would be their answer is culture. I feel like we kill it. In culture. Um, I would even venture to say we're on the other end of things where we maybe overdo it. <laughs> so um, there, there's, there's, every, there's all these little subgroups, you know, we have like college groups like the W peeps and the pit peeps and we have our, um, you know, ethnic diversity groups and we have our veteran groups and we have our softball teams and our dog judge teams and we have chili cook-offs and, you know, and we have water pond competitions. I mean, they're a hoop, you know, they, they vote on it and they come up with the ideas um, and it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, and then number two would probably be the work-life balance. Um, and that's kind of a, the reason I bring that up is because in sales, a lot of times people go into field sales and um, even though you have flexibility, um, there is, um, you're just driving a lot, so it's hard to multitask. And so, um, so you just kind of work all the time, you know? Um, so a lot of people like to come to inside sales because they like, they like the flexibility. That's a, like, I mean, the work-life balance is a big one. It's very, very 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. And they do a lot of time off as a incentive for doing nice. that. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's encouraging. All of that's encouraging. And I'm sure it's, it's, very, it's an attractive lifestyle for many. Yeah. What makes what makes ADP, in your opinion, unique from other companies, whether that be companies similar to ADP, but or not? Okay. Well, first of all, ADP is a global company, um, so uh, you know we uh, have a lot of diversity because of that. You know, and we try to implement that across the board and just being mindful and um, thoughtful and. Uh, open, you know, uh, open mindset to hearing all sides of things and trying to make decisions from that. And then another thing in terms of product, we're a one-stop shop for companies, HR needs. So a lot of our competitors offer this and offer that, but ours is a total solution. And, um, but we put it all in the cloud. So it's all, um, we're actually one of the number one business to business cloud provider in the world. We're like Google and Apple. We just don't have a consumer presence, you know, <laughs> we're just business to business. Um, so that's why you don't really see like commercials, you know, and retail settings and everything. But, but it's, um, we help streamline 
the administrative burden when it comes to employees and kind of HR stuff. Um, so they can, you know, focus on other things um, there. So, but I, I think being a one-stop shop and, and global is two factors. Yeah, absolutely. And ADP is such a well-known brand, especially by businesses. But one of one of the reasons we appreciate you're doing this session is that it's important for people to see the uh, opportunities there in terms of, uh, uh, well, career path and maybe longevity in, in one organization. Sure. So what is something that most people don't know or might be surprised to learn about ADP? Yeah, I think the one I get a lot um, is a lot of people recognize us as a payroll company, as they should, because on the user end, people see our logo on their paychecks and on their tax forms. So they think payroll, you know? Um, and I did as well when I was a bartender at Permanis and Punch Jabble, uh, when, they, when I was talking to them and I'm like, sounds familiar. <laughs> and I got paid. <laughs> um, so I think a lot of people recognize us as a payroll company. That's how we did start our business. It was visible user end, but anything dealing with employees, not just payroll, uh, we have a solution for it. Nice. What is something uh, that you look for on a candidate's resume or in their cover letter? Yeah, um, for me, I'm not a big fan of cover letters unless there's something you need to specifically tell us that maybe not be appropriate on a resume because they tend to be a little generic, you know, I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I could, I can already gather that based off the resume. So it's like, there's like a gap, like I had a baby, you know, <laughs> so, but I'm ready to get back in the workforce. So that kind of describes it a little bit, fills it in. If somebody doesn't feel comfortable putting that on the resume and they want to use it. Right. But in terms of a resume, um, so at EDP, we have, we're a global company and we, we have offices pretty much everywhere. Um, but we, so we have every, business role under the sun, which is beautiful because a lot of students, you come from different towns and cities that you might be going back to, you know, after college. But specific to Pittsburgh and why I'm very involved locally is um, we only really hire for inside sales um, for our Robinson location. And specifically right out of school, mostly just our small business division. So to know that. <laughs> and then in terms of looking the resume, I look for more action, words um, versus like duties. My duty was to tend bar. Well, I know what a bartender is, you know? I wanna know how you did it, you know? Um, and um, so more duties, more action words, anything kind of salesy related, communication related. And I look for your personality in it too, you know? I like when it's a little, when people kind of put themselves in it versus kind of generic. Like I'm a recent college grad looking for a great reputable company. Well, yeah, you know. Uh, so I, I like what's, I like um, I, I like more some connecting of the dots. So like, so if you maybe are seeking a sales career, and this can apply if you're not seeking a sales career, this can apply to anything. To saying, you know, I've been in really frontline jobs. I've been a server. I've been a waitress. Um, you know, I've done all these little things where I'm I'm frontline and I'm seeking a frontline job. Um, because of my personality. I love it, you know, and then I'm like, oh, what to call you. <laughs> That's good. That is good insight. Very good insight there. Um, and you can flip it depending on the business or what your role is that you're, you know. Right, but appreciate uh, the comment relative to let's stick to some action verbs and let people know what we've done in the various roles because most things are somewhat implied if we have certain titles imply certain things in terms of what the duties are, but yes, let's see what you really did. What, what value did you bring to that position and what skills did you apply or perhaps learn or hone while you were in that position? So that's great. Do you have any tips on what students um, or any applicant, whether they're students or graduates, should do or perhaps not do in a job interview? Yeah, so um, in a job interview, um, I think, I think first of all, I know this seems so simple, but it's so, different. so I guess first of all, um, I would definitely research the company. A lot of times people don't, you know, and you don't have to overdo it, but it just kind of seems like, oh, you just are looking for a job and you just need a job and I just want a job, you know, and, and business and managers and businesses, they put a lot of time and energy and money and hiring and backgrounds and starts and logistics and buying laptops. 
it's really a lot and it's a marriage. I mean, you know, when you're going to work, it's a, it's a relationship, you know, it's a marriage. And so when you don't um, just invest a little bit of time, not overdo it and, and to trying to get to know them and ask, and then that allows you to gather some pretty good questions versus generic questions. Um, I just think that shows like, wow, okay, he's really thoughtful. Wow, he seems a little bit more mature than the average my college students, it seems like he's really taking this seriously, right? So I think that's always really great. And then um, when you're interviewing for a role, you get that interview. And I know it's so hard because you're trying to figure your life out. So you might not have a direct path, like I want to be in sales. But if you do get an interview for, let's just say, an inside sales role, Google, why do people love inside sales? Why do they hate it? And then that'll allow you to gather your thoughts around that and to fill that in when you're when you're really um, articulating yourself you can pull from examples so um, so for example I always tell people like when I prep them for my interviews for my managers um, as I say take a pit and pad zen out play ocean waves or whatever your jam is you know to calm your mind but isn't too distracting and just write start writing stuff out about your life like you know why would I honestly hire myself honestly why would I really honestly hire myself what did I do as a hostess? Like, what were my duties? How did I do them well? What were challenges? What did I like? What did I not like? And just free flow. And you'll learn so much about yourself because everything's a blur in life, you know, and you, you forget about things. And, and then when things start to come together, like all your different experiences, you'll start to see more patterns and things like that. And it's, it's a really neat thing. And I did that. I'm so glad that I, I still have those notes and I carry them with me from for, throughout the years, you know, and it's just really neat. So I, I would say, honestly, reflect on yourself because that'll be able for, because I always do interviewing with speed dating. So they want to get to know you quickly. They want to get past that superficial fluff of the weather and the sports. So we, they want to get into the deeper side of you. And this will allow you to articulate your thoughts a little better so you don't have those coulda, shoulda, woulda moments after the fact once you turn your brain on, you know? So you can kind of you know, I mean, like you said, look at your notes kind of casually, and then that can just pull your, your thoughts are in the front of your mind versus the back of your mind. And it just, it's a more fluid conversation. That's, that's awkward. <laughs> yeah, that's great advice. That's, uh, that's not even something I had thought of ever. And we, and Kelsey and I both have done a lot of career coaching as, as have our colleagues. So that's gr I love that. I'll, I'll be using that to share with students and graduates, just really sit down and give some thought to why would you hire yourself? what's great about you and uh, think through, just really take some time to think and almost meditate on it. I love that, Casey. Yeah, meditate's a good, a good one. Yeah. So uh, more specifically, what opportunities are available to alumni or soon to be graduates or even students in terms of internships with ADP? Yeah, we're so random on internships, to be honest. It's kind of because it's based off each business unit's budget how they feel about it and what's going on. So if we're going through a big growth spurt, it's too high, hard to hire people and do interns. But if we're not hiring, we're like, let's do interns. So it's kind of a little last minute, to be honest. But hey, Handshake, if I get it, I pop it on Handshake. You know? So I hit up my employees who have all gone to college at like IUP and Clarion, you know? And so they usually blast it out to their networks to, to, to help me. But so internships are random, that's a lot. And then, uh, but they are paid. And, um, but we really are hiring for inside sales for our small business division. Alumni, you know, sometimes they're still also interested in the small business because a lot of people have passion for small businesses. Um, we have major accounts, we have global. Um, we, we, have, we have eight divisions for inside sales actually out of this office, but mostly kind of recent college grads, um, they take them in our small business okay. division. Um, so basically you go to the office, 8.35, Monday through Friday. They're all working from home now, <laughs> but normally we're an office environment culturally. And um, you're selling through the phone and the computer, and you'll have a specific territory, you know, somewhere in the U.S., most likely East Coast, Mid-Atlantic. So it could be Rochester, New York, or Pittsburgh, PA, or Atlanta, Georgia. It'll be set area, and you'll be calling on small businesses and, and, and helping them with their HR pain points <laughs> and giving them HR solutions. That's wonderful. So in terms, so, so that would be, you just mentioned entry level. And then is there a lot of room for growth for people if they wanted to make a career of it at ADP rather than leave the company to go elsewhere? Is there room for growth there? Yeah. So in terms of room for growth and growth means different things, I think to different people. So majority of people grow financially. You get base salary increases every year for hitting senior quotas. 
Um, you know, you have uncapped commissions that are paid on top of that. And every year you, you get better at your job when you make more money, total comp. And that's where the majority of people grow. And then we have some people that uh, we promote in leadership. And if you meet the requirements for that, we train them and we grow them. And then we have openings, we hire from that pool of talent. And then, um, and then sometimes people just want to change after two years, 10 years, whatever, whatever your story is. And sometimes they just move departments. So they, they might go from small business to major accounts, global or HRO or, um, you know, whatever, you know. Um, and then I have some onesie twosies where I see people move in field sales. Sometimes we have some implementation roles I see people move into, the client service role. But really, in terms of just Pittsburgh, then that's really kind of really the majority of it. But if you're open to relocate, that's a whole different story. <laughs> or if you're from another area and you like to get home after a few years. So. Yeah, that's great. That's, that's, I love, again, the different perspective you took there in terms of career growth. So there's really an opportunity for growth in multiple different ways within ADP. And I guess that's understandable given it's a global organization and a large organization. So Yeah, I've seen um, it all. <laughs> yeah, which is good. So do you hire only U.S. citizens or will you do hiring outside of that in terms of sponsorships and such? So we don't do sponsorships for the, for the sales. I, it depends on the department and budgets and t talent pool, basically. So any tech jobs, we de they have sponsorships for any kind of tech positions, but for sales, we don't. Okay. Um, what is uh, one piece of information or advice or both, perhaps more than one piece, that you'd like to share with anybody who might be tuning in currently or later to this session? Advice, yeah. So I think um, advice would be um, do, do the meditation, do the reflection, and, and really figure out you. And I know right now people are like, I just need a job, right? Um, I, need, I need to make money. And, and I like that. I like the hunger. I like the ready to work mode. Um, and, but there are opportunities for you to still kind of, you know, um, kind of find what still works for you, even though it might be a little bit different of what, what your career path and you're really focusing on initially or what your degree is. But, um, but the managers can vibe you and they feel when you're kind of forcing it a little bit too, you know? So you kind of still want to, um, you know, do that reflection and um, so, so you can find the right fit. And I think another thing is too, um, I'm very active in terms of networking and getting out there, but I don't really see it all the time on the um, candidate pool end, you know? Um, and um, I don't think they see how valuable that is. So I actually had somebody message me on LinkedIn. Hey, Casey, I met you two years ago at a Pitt Career Fair. That's impressive. You know? Yeah. And for in sales, one, you weren't afraid to reach out. Okay? You don't view me as somebody different than you. Um, two, um, you have great follow-up skills. You obviously had some kind of organization to remember that, because it's too hard to remember each other, really, at those things sometimes, um, unless something really, you know, different happened. Um, so they must have remembered some way of some way of organization and to follow up because follow up's really important in sales. So communication. So they didn't really have a sales background, but that intrigued me. So I got on the phone with them. And I said, oh my gosh, I love their personality. This is awesome. Uh, so normally maybe I wouldn't have set them up based off the viewing their resume and my stand past it. But because of that, that gave them an edge for me. And I put that in my notes to the managers. And yeah. so I'm excited to see how it goes. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's great advice all over throughout this entire chat with you. Uh, and certainly, yeah, follow up and follow through two really important behaviors and skills that any employer would be looking for in a hire, right? So um, I'm glad that you mentioned handshake. So I want to remind those who are current, who are with us now, and anybody who might join us, that any of the any of their colleges or universities that would be perhaps tuning in. So that would include California University of Pennsylvania, Clarion University of Pennsylvania, Edinburgh University, uh, Slippery Rock University, and IUP. We all use handshake. So we love that we have employers like ADP who are using that platform. So be sure to check out that platform for jobs and internships. So I want to see if any of our current participants have questions that they would like to ask as part of um, our recorded session. Any questions? 
Rami or or Wumi? Okay. Rami. Uh, you did answer a lot of them, honestly. You're going down <laughs> my know. list. It's okay. Um, so did you, so are you, you graduating the, coming uh, up in spring? Yeah, so I, I'm graduating on upon like upon contingency of my internship this summer. Mm -hmm. So I'd be available at the end of, end of August. Oh, great. And I found it interesting how you mentioned that like there's like sub sex of your company culture. Like, do you think there's like more like, you know what I mean? Like click, is it clickish almost? It, it kind of just sounded like you were just describing it as like, the college graduates from WV all hang out and then all the people like congregate if you're, you're like a sports or an athlete or I think that's a good question and I can see how you viewed it that way yeah no it's definitely not like that at all it's very family oriented very uh, a sense of community but I think people enjoy um, connecting to on common commonalities as well and also uh, these groups actually do a lot in terms of awareness so like our veteran group, uh, this is really, really cute. In the Marines, don't quote me because I can't exactly remember, but there's a specific workout, it's called a P, something like Phillips workout, Phil, something with a P. Well, the veterans group wanted to um, tell people what veteran actually meant and military and explain all the different things and whatever misconceptions that they get or frequently asked questions. So they hosted like this kind of presentation and then anybody that, it was optional anybody that's really into working out they actually put them through this workout it was kind of like a crossfit looking workout yeah where you like you know you do a push-up and jump up as those blurbies i'm not very i don't know all the lingo um and they did this awesome killer workout at adp and it, so it was more about oh, it's more about awareness versus clicks great question um, honestly you uh you really went over everything that I really wanted to ask. Awesome. Call me on LinkedIn. Thanks, Rami. Wumi, do you have any questions? Yes. Thank you so much, Kese. Absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah. So when is likely you guys have an opening for, for employees? Then my second question. So when I go for the interview, uh, they asked me for the for the uh, like salary comments. What is the best answer for 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 like uh, for that question? Yeah, there's a little bit of audio snag on those key words there. Catch the first yeah. one. Wumi, is it possible for you to write your questions in chat because our connection is not great. I'm having trouble understanding your, your um. It's kind of garbled. Okay. Can you write them in chat? Write them in chat. Thank, yes. you. Thank you. So while she's writing that, something I wanted to add to the advice thing, I guess, is, you know, you're going to receive a lot of rejection in looking for a job. You know, and I always view um, interviewing kind of like dating, you know, sometimes you got to go on different dates and it doesn't mean that everybody doesn't like each other or it's not um, anything to take personally. You know, sometimes they just interview a lot of people and they have to weed through a lot of awesome people. I also view it like the voice in the American Idol, like, a lot of great singer. Sometimes 79 is not your night, you know, um, so never take your that personally, use it as fire keep pushing forward and making more connections and, and making positive impressions on people. Cause a lot of times if they can't hire, they might refer you to their friends and family that have businesses too. So um, never ever take the rejection part personally. Right. And that's, that's great advice too. I, I think the, when, when I talk with students and graduates or alumni about the job search, I, I think it's important for any one of us to find the right fit. So I don't think any of us want to end up in an organization where it's not a good cultural fit for us. So right. I, um, I see Wumi, you have your first question in there. Thank you. Oh, I see it. So, Great. so Wumi's asking, when is likely you have an opening? Yeah, so right now we are continuing interviewing and we are extending verbal offers to people we'd normal, 
likely extend verbal offers to. And then when the quarantine lifts, then we're going to um, proceed with picking a start date with them and background checks. Okay. So we're still moving forward. Good, very good. And I know, Wumi, you had a question about interviewing, um, something about um, what what you should do in a particular instance in, in the interview, but I don't know what it was that you were asking. Sorry. About the salary. So in Tanoa asked about the salary. Can you write that one in chat as well? Yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I think some of I think sometimes connections are not the greatest, and uh, certainly the internet um, or Wi-Fi rather is getting a run for its money. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these, these days. That is and, true. And some of our it depends on where we're located and how many people we have in a particular uh, building or home or what have you that are using it. So I know there's a lot of activity in my house. So if the videos suck it up a lot. It's yeah, like a lot. that's true too. Yeah. So, um, Wumi asks, what is the best answer if we asked about the salary during the interview? Oh, yes, if they're asked about salary. Yeah, what is the best way to answer that from your perspective, Casey? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I guess for me, it's, it's so, so black and white for me that I, um, I don't know if I'm the best for this. So, um, but I'll give you some information to take or leave kind of thing. So for ADP, our base salary is our base salary. There's no range, you know, it is what it is, you know, so it's, it's really, does that, is it acceptable to you? You know, so it's not really us. Um, so, um, and then, you know, some companies have ranges based off of your experience. So um, I know you don't want to be eliminated from a, something because you're trying, you don't want to lowball it or highball it, you know, um, you know, so I'm, I'm really not sure about that. Maybe, you know, maybe I would say even kind of turn it back on them. You know, obviously I'm looking for a job. I'm excited about your company. I'm excited about this role. You know, where, do, where do you feel like is, is something that you would put out there based off of that? You know, what is, how are you guys paying for that? Or, you know, is there a range or is there just something that is like a set pay? And, you know, um, I would maybe flip it with a question. So my, that might be a good thing to Google. How can I flip it with a question? Um, so you don't get yourself kind of eliminated based off of an answer that you say. Yeah, and so that you don't also <laughs> limit your salary because usually the, as the, uh, the old adage, I don't even know if it's an adage, I'll call it that goes, that the person who says a number first is usually the person who loses. Not yeah. always, but could. Where there is room to negotiate, you want to make sure that you take, that you're able to leverage that best. I will tell you that as I'm sure other career centers have, IUP has on our career center website or webpage, we have, uh, if you scroll down, if you're on your phone, you just keep scrolling, 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 and you'll see a various resources. If you're on a PC or a laptop or a tablet, perhaps, you would look over on the right-hand side of our page and scroll down about midway, and you'll see, again, that list of resources. And one of those resources is a salary negotiation resource. So feel free. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty good summary of, of the research that we've done in that area. So we also have some presentations on that that topic that we could make available to you. So that's a great answer from Casey because it's covered. she covered it from different perspectives there. Yeah, I guess for me, if I were your, in your guys' shoes personally, if this was a job I wanted, I, was, I would just go for it. You know, I would just get the, you know, I would just go for more of the experience as long as it kind of covered the bills and you can kind of go from there, you know, you can say, well, how can I grow financially? You know, what's my opportunities to grow financially? I'm a hustler. I'm excited. I'm ready to work. You know, I'm very driven. You know, how can I grow financially? You know, if it's not as um, maybe what you want it to be. Um, so I guess it depends on your options too. Yeah. So those are great questions from uh, Rami and Wumi. So thank you so much for yeah, those. Thanks, guys. Um, does anybody have any other questions they want to place in chat? Casey, anything else you would like to add? No, I just appreciate, um, you know, anybody listening to this and for you guys joining, this is great. 
Um, and I just want to say thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks. Well, thank yeah. you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it too. As Casey's yeah. invited Rami and Wumi, she invites others as well to connect with her on LinkedIn. It's a great way to network online and perhaps find yourself some opportunities with ADP. So thanks again, Casey. Thanks to those who joined us and I'm going to end our recording now.